Thank you, sir. Appreciate that song. Have your Bibles open to Luke chapter 1 tonight. Luke in the first chapter, our last final message in the Christmas theme. Of course, this Thursday we'll have our New Year's service. Looking forward to that. Announced that this morning. And uh, looking forward to having three men from our church preach this Thursday night. Brother Wayne McDonald, and Brother Steve Evans, and Brother Zach Evans. Three generations, all from one family, all in one church. What a blessing that is. And uh, we're sure excited about that. Looking forward to that. It'll be 7 o'clock this Thursday for our midweek service. But I'm glad you're here tonight. And as we look tonight in Luke chapter 1, and our last and final message, and the reason for this season, Emmanuel, God with us, we're going to look at one more response We've looked at a number of responses, or a few responses, uh, to the birth of Christ. We looked at the wise men, and their response was to follow it. Can you say that with me? Their response was to follow it. We looked at Joseph, and his response was to obey it. So wise men, they're supposed to follow it, and Joseph was supposed to obey it. Uh, Pastor Ryan preached a message on the shepherds. I didn't get there this year, but their response was to tell it. See, the wise men to follow it, the uh, Joseph to obey it, and the shepherds to, to tell it. And tonight we're going to look at Mary. Mary, a tremendous part of the Christmas story. Obviously, because of other religions and other, other religious people, they have, many people have taken Mary and put her on a very high pedestal. In fact, there are some people who say that praying to Mary has the same effect as praying to her son Jesus. I'm here to tell you, my friend, that, that only to Jesus can we pray. Praying to, to, to Mary means nothing. All right, As a mother of Jesus, she holds no higher place in the kingdom of heaven than you or I. But she had a very tremendous and special place in the Christmas story as a mother of Jesus. What an honor. What an honor. If, if you think back now of all the things she went through and all the pain and, and, the, and the travesty and the turmoil around that, still to walk away saying, I was the mother of Jesus Christ. I think there is not a lady in here who, on hindsight, say, I, I would be willing to do that. In fact, you ladies who have given birth through tremendous pain and labor, at the end, don't say, boy, that stinks. You say, wow, I have this wonderful baby, and many of you are crazy enough to do it again and again. <laughs> Mary, tremendous blessing. But she had a tremendous response in Luke chapter 1. You see, God came to earth as a small child, and he came about in a way that used and made use of a normal human being. You know that God uses normal people? Aren't you glad? Because by definition, we're all normal. By definition. We're all average by definition. I know, I know, many of you children, I just hurt your psyche to tell you you're not special. All right, well, God thinks you're special, but beside that, you're just average. But God uses normal people, does he not? It's a good thing he does because he can use me, he can use you. God uses people in spite of their failings, in spite of their choices. God uses people. And in Luke chapter 1, if you begin, please, in verse number 26, we'll look at the scripture. And the Bible says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came into her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. Let me pause there very briefly. Sometimes at church, I'll go to somebody and say, hello, how are you doing? And they'll have this response, uh-oh. Years ago, Brother Bill Swain was on staff here, a principal here for 26 or 29 years. He had a special phrase, right? God has a special plan for you. Uh-oh, what am I supposed to do? I see this, and the angel came to, to Mary, Gabriel, and said, Mary, you're a special person in God's economy. And she was troubled at this saying, uh-oh, what have I done now? What have I done that an angel has now shown up? What, what have I done? This is not, that's the Bible says she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. 
All right, she didn't instantly think this was a good thing. She wasn't thinking, boy, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not hearing what you're saying. I know you say it's good, but I don't think it's good quite yet. I'm a, I'm a little troubled in my mind. And sometimes when God comes to us, our natural tendency is to be a little troubled at what God is saying. But God had a special message for Mary. We see that in the, in the next few verses. Verse number 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be, in, uh, which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Lord, I thank you for this time. In these next few minutes, Lord, I ask you to help us. Lord, may our hearts be turned towards you. Lord, as we look at this truth from your word, would you reveal some spots in our life, Lord, that this truth would just apply and stick? Lord, help us to be touched and changed by the truth, and would your spirit have freedom and liberty inside this building tonight, Lord? Help me as I speak to say those things that would be helpful. And Lord, I ask if there's anyone here who doesn't know you as their Savior, whether they're here or, Lord, online, would they trust you tonight as, their, as your Savior? Lord, we love you. We praise your name in Jesus' name I ask. Amen. I see in this passage some tremendous truths for us. I don't want to get too sidetracked, but I almost, I almost like this passage. Now forgive me. I almost like this passage more than Luke chapter 2. I know that Luke chapter 2 is the most familiar Christmas story. Came out of a decree from Caesar Augustus. All the words would be taxed. This taxing was first made. Okay, I know that. And that's great. We read it at Christmas and we read it at Christmas. But I love this passage with Mary. Kind of the, the setup for the Christmas story. There is so much power in this passage. There is so much truth in this passage. I see, first of all, the announcement from Gabriel the angel. What a tremendous job that Gabriel got to have that day. A tremendous job. You get to go tell somebody that they're going to be able to birth the Son of God. Don't you like being the bearer of good news? This was Gabriel's job today. It was an announcement of judgment. It, wasn't, it was, Mary, I have the best news, Mary, that you will have ever heard in your entire life. Even better than the day that you, you were espoused to Joseph, and sometimes in Bible times it was done from an early age, sometimes even before they knew the other person, they were destined to marry that person. So I'm not sure when Mary found that out, but I'm sure she was excited. But nothing would have compared in her life to this announcement in hindsight, to birth the Son, give birth to the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Don't you like to be the one to bear the good news? Hey, I'm going to go, like talked about this morning, paying off a debt. I'll go tell them. I'll go deliver the check. Oh, they're getting a promotion? I'll tell them. And here, Gabriel got to give a message to Mary. The message was simple. It was, Mary, you're favored. Mary, you're in good standing with God. On the report card, card from the Lord, Mary, you've got A's. You're favored by the Lord. I think of another man who was favored and noticed by God. His name was Job. He was, by God, uh, called to be a, a just man, a righteous man. In fact, he was, by God, uh, shown that no one else in the earth compared to this guy named Job. Boy, we would look at that and say, I'd rather have the announcement from Mary than the announcement of Job. I'd rather go through what Mary went through than what Job went through. But, but the message from the angel was, Mary, you are favored. Mary, you're fulfilling prophecy. Mary, Jesus, the Son of God, will be born for you. Mary, he's the Son of the highest. What a tremendous message. And God often gives to you and I tremendous messages. Now, there are some times in Scripture the message from God is not as tremendous in our sight as maybe this one is. But if it's from God, it's still a tremendous message. 
But God gives us a message. He's given us this whole word of messages, and, and yet I think we fail to appreciate it. It is lost on us sometimes because of the busyness of life. And God speaks to us. The, the, the God of the universe speaks to us, and we miss it. If an angel showed up in your life or in my life, you better believe that someone else would know about it. You better believe it. If he showed up to me, unless he told me not to, there'd be a few sermons on the angels showing up. I'm telling you right now, there may be a YouTube video. There may be an interview here and there about that. And in your life as well, an angel showed up. Listen, people talk about the strangest things now, right? You see, they, they try to sell a piece of bread that looks like Jesus. You've seen these before. They sell them on eBay. It's crazy. Somehow this is news. And listen, if an angel showed up in your life and my life, you better believe we talk about it. And yet God, God shows up in our life every single day. <laughs> We'd be excited if an angel showed up. We have the word of God that we can open any time of the day. We have it on our cell phone in about any language we can possibly dream of. We can look at it in the morning, afternoon, and evening, and I doubt we have the same excitement that we would have if an angel showed up. God often gives us a tremendous message, but I want you to notice something here. The, the angel has come down to Mary and given her just, I think, a fantastic truth, a fantastic message, and said, Mary, you, are, you found favor with God. I mean, wouldn't you like to know that? This side of glory? I mean, one day... Hopefully he'll say to each one of us, well done now, good and faithful servant. But wouldn't it be nice along the way if the Lord showed up and said, listen, by the way, I've noticed you and you're doing an A plus job. I noticed how you're living. I noticed how you're praying. I noticed how you're raising your kids. I noticed you at the office. You know what? You're doing a first class job. It's really quite noticeable. Uh, wouldn't you like to know that? He gives a tremendous message, but there was a little misunderstanding the angel comes to Mary and says, Mary, you're going to have the Son of God. He's going to be born. Look with me, if you would, please, in verse number 34. The first thing that Mary says is not, thank you. It's not, wow. It's not, I'm so excited. The first thing that Mary says is this, how shall this be, verse 34, seeing I know not a man? You know, Gabriel, I, I hear what you're saying, and wow, I just don't know how that's going to work out, though. I just don't see how you're going to connect these dots. You ever get distracted by the message from God? There was a little misunderstanding right here. Mary got sidetracked a little bit right here. Now, I don't think she was wrong or disbelieving the angel. Unlike Zacharias in chapter number one, he was disbelieving on the angel. I don't think Mary was disbelieving. But I, it amazes me that her first question was, well, how shall this be? All right, I hear what you're saying, but why don't you tell me how it's going to work out? All right, all right, have it make sense to me. I can identify with that of a man. I want things to make sense. I want things to logically line up. When they don't, sometimes my brain goes like a little bit of a lurch. Okay, I see A plus B, but how do we get the color purple over here? I'm just not, I'm not connecting these dots this way. And the Lord comes down and says, listen, Mary, you're in great shape. God thinks you're wonderful. You're highly favored. You're going to have the baby Jesus. He's the son of the highest. Great. She's like, whoa, okay, wait, slow down now. How shall this be? And listen, Christian, don't get lost in this, all right? Don't miss this. Listen, when God brings a message, all right, don't worry about how he's going to do it. All right, he'll work it out. He, he'll make it happen. Now the angel, through the grace of God, was so gracious to Mary. He actually answers her question a little bit. Aren't you glad that God answers those questions for us sometimes? Sometimes when we get in those spots, we ask the same type of questions. All right, Lord, I know you're going to do this, but how? I don't see, I don't see how you're going to connect these dots. And, and the Lord is often gracious. He's like, okay. Almost like he sits down. Okay, all right, Mary, let me help you here. All right, little J.D., let me help you here, all right? I know my thoughts are bigger than your thoughts, but let me break it down for just a little bit here. It'll be okay. Wow. You see, there was a tremendous message from the angel, but there was a little misunderstanding. Well, Mary's like, how shall this be? Because I only know of one way of this happening, and God said, yeah, but you don't know me that well then. 
And sometime in your life and in my life, we say, but God, I only know of one way this can happen. And God says, well, welcome to my universe. You may remember that I created this thing, and I'm not bound by the laws of nature, as you may be. Gravity has no hold on me. I can do what I want to do. I'm God. And there's a little misunderstanding here, and the angel clears it right up and gives her the master plan. Verse 35, the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. I see the master plan in this, and I see God and his sovereignty, God and his grace, God and his compassion, and God and his mercy. He said, I'm going to send my son to this earth. Obviously, we've been focusing on this particular concept throughout the Christmas season, and in my personal study, I've been focusing on that, and just a continual humbleness in my heart to think that God would again stoop down to mankind. We're nothing. We are absolutely nothing, and he is everything. And he says, I'm going to do it this way, and I'm going to make you a way of salvation. And, and, and Mary, I'll work this out. The Holy Ghost will come upon thee, and the holy thing will be born of you, Mary. It'll be okay. What a tremendous truth. What a tremendous master plan. The fact is, the Bible tells us that Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. This plan wasn't a surprise to God, though it was a surprise to Mary this day. Surprise to Joseph, a definite surprise to the shepherds, surprise to the wise men, but not a surprise to God. The master plan shows that God is in control of everything. In your life and in my life, God has a masterpiece. He's doing something, and we may not be able to see it always and may not be able to see all the pieces but God has a master plan, something that he is doing, something that is beautiful, something that is eternal. You see, you're not here in Saginaw, Michigan, just because. God has an eternal plan. In Saginaw? Well, you better believe God has a plan if it has to be Saginaw. But I don't see it yet. You probably don't yet. I noticed that the angel didn't tell Mary, Mary, you're going to give birth in a stable. Didn't tell her that part. Mary, you're going to have to flee to Egypt because you're going to be killing all the children. So you're going to be homeless for a little bit. Didn't tell her that part, did he? Nope. He just painted the broad picture. You're going to give birth to the son of the highest. The details, don't worry about them. And in my life and your life, there's a lot of details that we just need to quit worrying about. You know what? Our life would be a whole lot more simple if we quit worrying about the details and let God run his master plan. Well, what do I do today? Just follow his master plan. Get up tomorrow and follow his master plan. If that involves going to work, then go to work. I read a story, I think it was H.A. Ironside, or one of, those, uh, one of those men who worked for a little time, like a few of those men did, in a shoe a cobbler shop. They said that he would spend his, his spare time going to a local competitor shop, and he watched the competitor one time take the leather out of the water, and instead of hammering it and drying it out like he did, he just, the other man just attached the wet leather to the shoe. And so this particular man, he asked, he said, well, is that a better way to do it? Does the leather last as long? And this other man who was not as honest said, no, 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 but the shoes come back a whole lot quicker. He went back to, to who he worked for and said, what, why don't we do that? And his boss, who was a Christian, said this. He said, because one day... I'll stand before Jesus Christ. And I want to hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And he said, he's called me to make shoes, and I want to make the best shoes that I can make to the glory of God. You know what, God, what, what we ought to do for the Lord? Do the best we can. Make the best shoes you can for Jesus Christ. If it's putting on bumpers, then they better be the best bumpers this side of glory. If it's painting walls, they better be the best walls this side of heaven. If it's bacon cookies, they better be the best cookies known to man. If you're making no-bake cookies, quit. 
and start living for Jesus. I'm starting meddling now. I know that some of you are like, oh boy, Pastor, that's it. We're leaving the church. I love no bake. They're not cookies, they're dough. God has a master plan. Put it in the oven. <laughs> I got off track there, Brother Treadway. I got to get back on here. A master plan. Whatever God's called you to do, why don't you do it tomorrow? Quit worrying about the details. Just listen to his message. He's called you to be a child of God, a servant of the highest. You're, and listen, as a child of God, we're called the sons of God. Listen, follow his master plan, where he's put you, where he's placed you. There's someone there who needs the gospel. There's someone there who needs God's mercy and compassion. Then be that light. Be that salt. Be the man and the woman, the child that God has called you to be. Follow his plan and quit sweating the details. Well, the angel... The grace of God was compassionate to Mary. And I notice the response of Mary in verse 38. Remember the shepherds, they were supposed to follow it. Joseph, he was supposed to obey it. I said the wise men, not the shepherds. Shepherds supposed to tell it. The wise men follow it. But Mary, look in verse 38. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Kind of giving you a little pattern for the responses. So let me give you Mary's response here. You ready? Accept it. Accept it. If you're taking notes, you can write that down. Accept it. Those are what Mary said. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. She, first of all, made a presentation. Lord, I'm yours. Can you not help but think what Paul says in Romans, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Lord, here I am. It's not my life. It's not my dreams. I am yours. Any time, any place, anywhere, any way. Lord, I'm yours. We need some young ladies here to say, Lord, I'm your handmaid. Whatever you call me to, I'll do it. I may not understand it. All right, I hear what you're saying, but I may not understand it. But Lord, I'll do it. I'll accept it. There's a presentation. There's also permission. Be it unto me according to thy word. Whatever you say is okay with me. Whatever you do, I'm fine with. I accept it. There's some humility I see there. There's some wisdom that I see there. Mary, just so you know, the wedding you were looking forward to, it's going to look a lot different right now. Mary, you're a spouse to Joseph, and boy, you had these plans, and Joseph's probably been working on the house already. That's the way that particular culture worked, but it's, it's not going to be the same as it was before. Mary, what you dreamed about, it's not going to be like that. We have a newly engaged couple here at First Baptist Church, Brother Jonathan and Miss Sydney. Friday night, was that what it was, or Saturday night? Wednesday, well, oh my goodness, Wednesday night, wow. And Miss Sydney said yes. You said yes. Shockingly, Shockingly yeah. No doubt she has some ideas for the wedding. Women always do. Along the way, Brother Jonathan, she may ask you for your opinion. Answer it, but don't really matter. <laughs> what color do you like better? Yes. You like uh, blue? Yes. I don't like blue. Neither do I. Who said blue? Exciting time. But Mary, that wedding you're looking forward to, it's not going to be the same now. Mary's response, I'm yours. Permission, whatever you want. It's okay with me. Mary, you found grace in my sight. That tells me that Mary had a pretty good testimony, right? Mary, that respect that you had in the community, 
That good testimony that you had, it's out the window now, Mary. It's gone. Through no fault of your own, you did nothing wrong. In fact, you did what was right. That's why you're in this spot. The respect that you had, the reputation that you had, it's gone. And nothing you really can say will change it. Mary's response, I accept it. Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Lord, whatever you say is okay with me. When people give me the sideways glances, when I know they're talking about me, that's what people do, is it not? Oh, did you hear about Mary? Huh, Mary and Joseph. Oh, yeah, I heard about them. I always knew something was wrong with that girl. She was just too good. I could see it. Oh, baloney. Happens around church, too, you know. Happens around church. Made them in the minute that someone is, is, acts like a human and messes up, which we all have to do, right? Messes up. Oh, I knew it. I could tell. I could, I could see it coming. You could see nothing. You know they were talking about Mary and Joseph. Hey, did you hear what she said? <laughs> An angel came and told her it's, it's, it's the Holy Ghost. She said, that, really? Oh, yeah, that's not the half of it. And Joseph's still going to marry her. What? Oh, now, I'm just telling you so you pray for it. I'm not gossiping here. All right, you know, just put it on the prayer request at the temple. It'll be okay. Marry that respect and reputation that you had. It's gone now. And you'll probably never really get it back. At least she didn't think so. Hmm. Mary, at this point, at this point, Joseph, I don't think, knows yet. At least she, she didn't know that. She just found out. What's she thinking about Joseph? What will Joseph say? Will he believe me? Will, will Joseph still accept me? Will he understand? I'm glad for the hand of God because apart from, the, apart from God, Joseph wasn't going to be a part of this story. Mary, your child's going to be born in a stable. This exciting thing you just found out, you're going to be surrounded by animals. And then the first people there will not be your mom or your dad or your in-laws. It'll be some shepherds, some strangers. They'll show up first. Lord, I'm okay with that. Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. My friend, have you come to the place where you can accept God's plan? Where you can say, Lord, thank you. You see, acceptance says, okay. Acceptance realizes, listen, this is the way it's going to be. It understands it's out of our hands. Many Christians never get to this point. They never come to the acceptance. They're always praying, Lord, change this situation. Lord, change, alter these circumstances. They beg to be removed from a trial or tribulation. But we need to learn to accept what God has brought to us. Jesus said it this way, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Acceptance. Mary said yes to God, knowing the loss she might suffer. Mary said yes to God. When Gabriel told her she was going to be a God-bearer, her response was, let it be according to thy word. One of the most critical moments in human history had one of the most fantastic responses from a young girl. Can you imagine if Mary had said, you know what, Gabriel? I think I'll take a hard pass on that. What's behind door number two? You know what? Okay, but let me alter the situation a little bit here. But she didn't, did she? She just accepted it. And my friend, I hope that you and I can learn to accept it. And as I was studying this passage, I came to that and I was moved by that. 
as you can, I hope you can tell, and, and passionate about that. But then the Lord showed me something else. You see, that's not all Mary did. If it was, that would be tremendous, would it not be? And if you get to that point, then praise the Lord. But there's something else in this passage. If you look down in the passage, you'll see in verse 39, Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judea. Entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth, which was her, her cousin. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutations of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy, and blessed is she that believed it. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I was reading this passage and studying, and I saw how Mary accepted it. And remember, the wise men followed it, and Joseph obeyed it, and the shepherds told it, and Mary accepted it. But then I came to verse number 46 of Luke chapter number 1. And I almost missed a greater truth in this passage, where Mary says this, My soul doth magnify the Lord. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And listen, my friend, don't miss this. If you come to the place where you accept it in your life and accept what God has brought, then that's tremendous, great. And present your body as a living sacrifice, tremendous. But Mary went one step further. Not only did she accept it, she embraced it. Amen. And my friend, if we can come to the point where we can not only accept what God is doing in our life and accept it and say, okay, Lord, whatever you want, I'll accept it. I'll be okay with it. But come to this point and say, Lord, not only do I accept it, but I'm thankful for it. I am blessed by it. I am grateful for it. I am moved by it. I see the hand of God. Where acceptance says, okay, embracing says, thank you. Where accepting says, I'm okay with it. Embracing says, it's perfect. Where acceptance says, okay, it won't change, but I'm okay with it. I, I, I'll survive it. Embracing says, I'll do it again. I'll take it one more time. If I have it to do all over again, I wouldn't have it any other way. Embracing says, wow, wow, that God would, would let me have a part in this. You see, acceptance was, all right, whoa, whoa, whatever you say, I'm in. Whatever, whatever you're doing, I won't fight you. You can do that with me. Embracing says, are you kidding? This is what I get to be a part of? Are you joking with me? Are you serious? You're allowing me to do this? And notice in this time frame, she still has a reputation that's been destroyed. Her wedding is still messed up. She's still going to give birth in a manger. Those things haven't changed, but her attitude, her perspective has changed. And my friend... We can accept things, or we can embrace things. You see, God's will is not just to be accepted and tolerated, but it is to be anticipated and celebrated. God has a wonderful master plan. We're in 2020 right now. You may not realize this, but there's a pandemic going on around the world. It has caused an upheaval of life as we know it. Phrases like the new normal are being thrown around every single day. Life has been fundamentally altered. We may never, we may never see what we saw before. And we have choices to make. We can reject it. This whole thing's a hoax. Please, please don't do that. We can accept it and say, Lord, whatever you're doing, I'm okay with. 
Some of your lives have been turned upside down. And I'm sorry for that fact. I really am. There are people's jobs who have been destroyed through this, through this pandemic. And we can accept it. Or we can embrace it. You say, what, Pastor? Embrace it? Well, you may not realize this, but God was in charge in 2018. He's in charge in 2019. He's still in charge in 2020, and I'm planning on 2021 next uh, Friday, him still being in charge. So I can accept it, Lord, whatever you're doing, or I can embrace and say, God, you brought us to a tremendous time in this world. Lord, we have the gospel, and now we're seeing it touch lives that we never saw it touch before. Listen, we've had people touched by the gospel that I never thought would be touched by the gospel. People have watched, and I'm talking about a First Baptist Church, have watched and participated in our services who never would have before 2020, and God made a way for them to be touched by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, I didn't choose 2020, neither did you. We would have made a completely different path for our lives in 2020. Would we not have? And we can fight it, we can accept it, resign ourselves to it and tolerate it, or we can embrace it and say, God, you're doing something special. And I don't understand it, but you're still in charge. I don't get it, I don't see all the details, but you know what? I'm along for the ride, and I'm excited about the ride, and I'm glad you're the bus driver. It's embracing it. Oh, but some Christians, no. No? No, but I can't handle this. You see, embracing says, God, thank you. We're here in Saginaw, Michigan. When I was praying about if pastor, when he came and asked me about if he could put my name into, could be considered for the pastor here, my wife and I prayed and I called a couple of mentors in my life. Pastor led as one of them, but I couldn't quite ask him because, you know, we're talking about this situation. So he's, he's usually the first one I call, but I called a, another man. I called one of, one of my mentors and, and someone who has been close to me, older man, and kind of explained the situation. He said, J.D., you probably shouldn't stay in Saginaw. He said, it's not a growing city. He said, you're young. He said, you have a beautiful family. You're exciting. He goes, go somewhere. God will use it and build a big church. It'll be great. You know what? I happen to love Saginaw, Michigan. I really do. I wasn't born here, so I'm not a native like, the, like, like some of you here. I was a transplant. You know I'm half Puerto Rican. I use that to my advantage when I can. I'm born in Pensacola, Florida. I use that to my advantage when I can. I tell you what, I happen to use Saginaw, Michigan to my advantage when I can, too. I love being in Saginaw, Michigan. And I thank this man. I began to pray and said, Lord, do you want me to move from Saginaw, Michigan? The Lord brought some truth to me as I'm praying. The truth he brought to me is that, J.D., there's a lot of sinners in Saginaw, Michigan. I said, we haven't touched everyone yet, have we? The gospel still is effective, and I happen to love not just accepting Saginaw, Michigan. Sure, you know what? Sometimes I would change the weather. But last time I checked, I'm not going through hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquakes, wildfires, and occasional tornado. I can probably count them on one hand, the ones I've been through in my life. It isn't so bad in Saginaw, Michigan. I, I'll be around the country sometimes and I'll have to drive somewhere. We'll go home to see my, my mother-in-law in New Jersey. Traffic there is atrocious. It's horrible. It irritates me. <laughs> this is bad. I'm, I'm, I'm now from mid-Michigan because on a Friday night in the summertime, I avoid the highway to avoid the up north traffic. I'm like, I don't want to add five minutes to my trip to Bay Road. I'll go the back roads. Well, I'm blessed. I've tried to not only accept being in Saginaw, Michigan, I want to embrace Saginaw, Michigan. How about you? Well, I just can't handle the cold. Get over it. Get over it. Embrace what God is doing. Your situation in life, are you accepting or embracing it? Never, many Christians have not learned to accept, much less embrace what God is doing in their life. Not only, okay, Lord, but God, thank you. 
God, I couldn't have thought of a better plan. And I don't see all the details, and some of the details I see I'm not sure I like yet. But Lord, you're doing something. And I trust it because I trust you. I was a pastor who met a woman who was a Christian. They're traveling somewhere, and as their conversation turned to spiritual things, she began to mention how the Lord had answered some tremendous requests in her life. She began to talk about her daily list and what God had done, and then she ended with this, but there is still one request that he has not answered yet. She began to tell this pastor, I've been praying over and over, and she said, but I know he's going to answer it eventually. The pastor said, apparently my body language, he said, telegraphed some discomfort with her bold prediction. She was a little bit taken back and asked me, the pastor said, and asked me, well, well you don't think he'll answer the question, or answer my request. He said, I responded with her that sometimes, sometimes in our life, we're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. Because my Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. We know he is best. We know his way is best. His plan is best. His results are the best. I can embrace what he brings because God knows best. My friend, tonight, I wonder if God has taken you in a place in your life where maybe you've not even accepted it yet. Or you've said, you know what, God, I'm not okay with what you're doing yet. I'm not okay where you've put me yet. I'm not okay with where you place me yet. I hope you learn to accept it. But I hope you don't stop there. I hope you can, like Mary did, learn to embrace it. A fundamental change. Accept it instead of embracing. Embracing anticipates and celebrates what God is doing. Lord, I thank you for loving us. Lord, I thank you for the example of Mary. Lord, what a tender, sweet young girl who brings such a tremendous truth to my life. Lord, I'd ask that you would help us to be honest tonight in our heart. I wonder, my friend, if you're here. Maybe in your life, there's some things there you've not been accepting, much less embracing them. But maybe tonight God touched your heart. You could say, Pastor, as you spoke, God spoke to me. Maybe I need to accept it, but maybe you say, you know what, I want to embrace it. I want to embrace what God is doing in my life. Would you pray for me? God touched me tonight. I need to respond to him tonight. Would you pray for me? Who's, who would say that? That's me, Pastor. Would you pray for me? Amen. Let's lift that hand. Let's look back down. We'll see it. Amen. Amen. Who else? God spoke to me tonight. Amen. I want to have that response. I'm supposed to. Who else? Amen. Maybe you're here tonight. You don't know that you're on your way to heaven. We'd love to open a Bible and show you how you can know for sure. I wonder if you'd say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I'm not sure. I'm on my way to heaven, but I'd like to be sure. Just slip that hand up and slip it back down. And I'll draw no more attention to it than I did anyone else. Lord, you have seen the hands. Lord, more importantly, you know what's going on inside of us. Lord, may we respond. Jesus' name.